Today I'm joined by DC basketball legend Kurt Trouble Smith. Welcome to the show, sir. Uh, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you having me. No problem. No problem. So can you take us back to when you started to play basketball? Yeah, man. I started like uh, back when I was like five or six years old, uh, growing up in the Benham Park in the Watts area in D.C. Um, you know, just growing up, growing up in them two neighborhoods, you know, you had to, you had to do something, you know, you had, you had to play some type of sports to, uh, you know, to get, to get by in, that, in them neighborhoods. And so you played for Benham Park and the Watts Recreation Center when right. you started? Right. Yes. And did you play any boys club basketball? Yeah, I played boys club one year by uh, with the coach by the name of uh, Ben Bullock. Um, I played when I was 10 years old with Bullock, but did a lot of rec ball and did a lot of, um, you know, traveling with the AAU stuff back in the day. It's not as big as it was uh, now, but, you know, just started at a, as, at a young age, something that we had to do when we were younger. Mm hmm So I guess after you were in elementary when you started, so what junior high school, excuse me, what middle school or junior high school did you go to? Well, I went to Kelly Miller, I went to Kelly Miller Junior High School, which is a well-known junior high school in the area. Uh, it was known for uh, actually pickup basketball back in the day. Guys like mm -hmm. guys like Will Jones, uh, uh, my, uh, my uncle Fatty Teller, them guys used to come and play on the weekends. I, you know, as a young boy, and I was a little baby going to watch them play. But um, yeah, as far as like the school wise, you know, I played at Kelly Miller for. Uh, the late Dickie Wells was my head coach, a great guy, a Hall of Fame at American University, taught me a lot. Mm -hmm. And you, you went to Kelly Miller for what grade? Which grade? Seventh through ninth. Seventh through ninth. So you, did you play all three years for their team? Yeah, I played. I played. Um, actually, I played seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. Yes, sir. And how many years were you a starter on your middle school team, or your junior high team? Well, when I got to the seventh grade, uh, Coach Wells wasn't known for even having seventh graders making the team. So I ended, mm -hmm. up, I ended up making a team, and during the middle of the season, the guy, uh, our, starting, our starting point guard got hurt. And um, it was my turn to, uh, you know, to do my thing. And early, early since then, I started every game from seventh to ninth grade. So in the seventh grade, how good were you? Were you any good, or were you still kind of finding your way? Well, actually, I was just – I was still finding my way because of the mm -hmm. fact that you know, back then, you know, junior high school ball was real big back then in the city. And also, you know, it, it was very rare that a seventh grader even played on a GI team. So I was just trying to find my way. But, you know, with, with, with the support of, you know, my, my, my surroundings and my, and my family and my the neighborhood I grew up in, you know, I was always, always just getting better every day. So it, be, it became a pretty much, pretty much a great process for me, a great learning process. But, you know, by the time I was in ninth grade, I kind of like, so you mentioned that you come from a basketball family. You mentioned your uncle, Fatty Taylor. How many people actually in your bas in your family actually played Division One basketball, and how many actually were pros? Uh, my brother played Division One. You know, he he played in the league. Uh, my uncle Fatty played in LaSalle. He played in the league, mm -hmm. and uh, those were the pros. And uh, my cousin Kelly Taylor played at Pittsburgh. Uh, he was um, you know, played in the Capital Classic in, Classic in DC. A Carroll first team All Met guy. He mm -hmm. played Pitt. and uh, my my cousin, the late uh, Kobe Taylor. Oh, I mean, we we all man, we 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 had a family that just played ball, man. And uh, you know, come from our family, it was just great. It was just great to uh, be a part of that, that big family, man. And um, just to be a part of you know a, a process where you can just learn and get better every day. So you in the seventh, eighth, and ninth grade, you played at Kelly Miller. Who were some of the other players that you kind of ran into on that? junior high school circuit when you were playing that kind of went on to become great players also? Well, the standout guy to me was um, Donald Ford. And actually, we, we were together today. He stopped by the house and we were talking about the back in the day things. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, just how, how complex junior high school was back in the day. And um, it's, man, I, I, it's, it's, long, it's a long list, man, because, you know, back, you know, back when we were playing in the 80s, Junior high school ball was actually a real, real big thing in the city. Mm -hmm. So after Kelly Miller in the ninth, I mean after the ninth grade, you went to Mackin. Yep, and that that that, that was um, that wasn't by choice. That was by force <laughs> from my mom. Mm -hmm. uh, she always wanted me, but she saw the success 
that my brother had at St. Anthony's, and it worked out well for him. So she was determined to, you know, just put me in a private school and just hoping that it would be the same. But it was a great experience, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, it, it, I went to Mac and I ran a great group of guys. Um, you know, if I would stay, we probably would have, you know, if, actually my, my myself, Mike Smith, uh, Brian Hill from Georgia Tech, a lot of us went to Mac at the same time. We all transferred. And I always think, we always talk, if we would have stayed, you know, we probably would end up doing some big things up there. So it, it, it just, at that time, I was just young, didn't understand a lot. You know, and um, just it was totally different coming from a DC public school to a private school to make that adjustment. But uh, if I was to do it all over again, you know, I probably would stay at Mac. And not saying that things didn't work out of Coolidge, but just knowing that uh, my mom wanted what was best, you know, and that's how she looked at it. But I took the I took the other route and just, you know, she allowed me to transfer once she seen that I was, you know, kind of like not into it and and, and you know not. You know, not, not not acting right and things like that. So she just let me go on and do my thing after that. But it was a great experience to even experience a private school coming from a city where I'm from, a neighborhood so, where. I'm from. So, um, in the tenth grade varsity at Mackin. Oh no doubt, no doubt. No right, doubt. Yeah. 11th, 11th grade varsity at Mackin as well. Well, eleventh grade, I played about three games and that was it. Oh okay. So what was your time? Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You no, know, and after that, you know, I just set out. I, you know, I, I just, I, I kind of forced, I kind of forced my mom to get me out of there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So she, kind, she kind of was like, you know what, you go and do what you gotta do. But I, I had to finish my 11th grade school yet, Mac and though, before I transferred to Coolidge. So I, did, I didn't enroll in Coolidge until September my senior, my senior year. Right. So your 10th grade year, what were your minutes like? Did you did you play? Did you have a big role on the varsity team, or did you kind of have to uh, play behind some older guys? No, I, I, I actually started from day one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I actually started day one, and um, like I said, we had a pretty good squad. We we could have developed into a nice team if everybody would stay, but started from day one. It was a great experience playing against. Uh, we played Flint Hill, or Dennis Scott, and them guys. Uh, had a great chance to play against them. Um. Played against a few more public schools. Uh, got a great chance of just just playing against the uh, the history of the math and Morgan Wooten. Uh, they had Gerard Mustaf and them guys. They had a real nice nice team back then. So like I said, it, it definitely was a great experience playing against Carl, guys like Cedric Lewis, and getting a chance to play against Coach Carl Holmes and them guys, man. So it was it was a great experience. So uh, coming out of Kelly Miller, um, we already know you were probably a really high. Uh, middle school or junior high recruit, what were some of the other choices other than Mackin? Well, um, Dunbar was one that was, was top of my list coming out of high school, com coming out of junior high. Okay. Uh, actually, Dunbar and McKinley Tech. A guy by the name of Coach Mo and Coach Curry, they used to come to, uh, they used to come to um, Kelly Miller every day. And uh, actually, Coolidge was also on the list also. Frank, the late Frank Williams and the late Coach Jarrell Robinson. You know, like back then, you know, got, they, they were really recruiting junior high schools, you know, back in the day. And um, I, I, I would definitely hope that they would get that back also right now and, you know, from, from just to get the city ball back together. So you, you went the Mackin route, and then after Mackin, you transferred to Coolidge, and things kind of took off for you there. Uh, first team all met as a senior. Um, when you kind of think back on those Coolidge days, what are some of the things that kind of stand out to you about as far as the way you played in your team? Well, um, we, we, we had a great close team, a lot of young guys. Um, great squad, great squad. And um, we, had, we, we had an up-tempo up -tempo offense. Uh, the coach pretty much let us do our thing as long as we played hard and played defense. Um, it, it was a de definitely different system definitely different system than it was at Mackin. Mackin was more so very structured, uh, very structured system. Um, great coach Paul Fuquay, but uh, Coolidge was more of my style of play, really. just We, 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 we played hard, we had run and gun, uh, had some high flyers. My man, uh, Stanley Wright, uh, John Stuckey was a 10th grader, uh, Bill Burnett. Uh, to, uh, we, we had some great guys, man. Uh, B.J. Pennington. Had a real nice mob, man. And, um, I just enjoyed playing with them guys, man. And we still today, 
uh, keep in touch. So it was definitely a great experience for me to uh, go to Coolidge. You know, it could have went either way. Could have been the same. Uh, probably could have made first team all met at Mac and also. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I'm, I, w- I wouldn't throw my uh, high school career in for nothing, man. I, I appreciated it. So if you could go back to Coolidge and you could grade your, your shot selection, what would you give yourself on a scale of A to F? My Just shot your, <laughs> yeah, your shot. Your shot selection. Hey, that's a new one to me, man. <laughs> you well, you, you, know, you put it up. You, to be honest with you, man, uh, <laughs> the, beginning, the first 15 games, we were actually 15 and 0. Mm-hmm. That's when I was playing the shooting guard. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had a point guard by the name of Dirk Harris, and he broke his leg. We, we were playing against H.D. Wilson, and he broke his leg, so I had to move. I, I had to play a different role. You know, I, I, I had to um, I had to play point guard, which which actually got my select my shot selection a little worse <laughs> because you know you know playing playing the shooting guard, man. We we had a wide open offense, man, and um, you know, I pretty much had the green light, and uh. The, the, the way we ran our system, you know, a lot of shots were wide open for the way that we played because we played up-tempo and everything we did was fast break style. And uh, Coach allowed allowed us to actually shoot jumpers off the break, the secondary break and things like that. So sometimes that, – that, that, but really that is a great question as far as shot selection because I've, I, I actually did take some bad shots. You know, my shot selection got a little worse when I moved to the point because – from me moving to the one, it took a lot of scoring away from our team. Mm-hmm. So I, so I kind of forced a lot of things, you know, just to try to score. But you know, I can pretty much say from A to F, my shot, my, I, I'm, I'm gonna give it a B. A B. Yeah, you yeah, put up, yeah. you put up some decent numbers at Coolidge, that's for sure. So right. I had a question. Your senior year, um, I believe, should have been your brother Charles Smith's uh, senior year at at Georgetown, right? True, right? Exactly. So I've, I've always kind of wanted to know, like, how, how crucial was he in your development as a young player, like, leading up to high school? Was he very involved? Um, was he, did he come home a lot and kind of show you some things that he was learning in college? Or did he kind of, like, before you even got to high school, he really, really pushed you? Like, what was that development like coming from your older brother? Yeah, he, he, he was actually very involved. You know, um, we always talked, you know, you know, back yeah. then – Back then, you know, the Washington Post was really, really, really involved in high school basketball back then. Uh, the guy Donald Huff, you mm-hmm. know, he reported everything, man, that we did. And, um, uh, you know, we, we, we'd call each other, you know, he'd, he'd call and say, man, I heard you did good last night. Or, you know, he'd call and just ask me questions, how do you do? How did you do? But the, the difference was I had a chance to see him on TV mm-hmm. a lot back then, you know, to learn some things. Um, to, to see how he, his game developed into, you know, just really, really scoring the ball, basketball. Something he always, something that I knew he always can do. But that senior season, he just lit it up and, and ended up getting MVP at the Big East. Right. And um, got, got a chance to go through a lot of games. And, um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to actually have him in my corner and, and just fortunate to, to learn a lot, have conversations with him. He didn't come home a lot, though. Okay. Which, which was a great thing, you know. And you know, John Thompson didn't don't play that anyway. Right. So, uh, so uh, you know, a lot of phone conversations, and um, you know, he made he made he actually made it to a few of my games when he could when he could, and uh, he'd tell me, you know, what he thought that night, how I played, whether it was good or bad, and just let me know what you know what what what, what the college life gonna be like. Uh, you know, you ain't gonna be you ain't gonna be able to do that. You ain't gonna be able to, be able to get away with that move because it's big. Yeah, and it's just. Really, really teaching the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a great experience for me to even have him on that type of level, and um, to to actually watch me, you know, grow up, grow as a, a basketball player. So, as as the younger brother, did he really push you growing up? Uh, was there a lot of competition between the two of you coming up, or was he kind of because of the age difference in his own group and you in your own group? Exactly. Yeah. That, 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 that's exactly what I'm about to say. He, he was in his. Uh, I wouldn't say own world, but like you said, you 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 hit it real right. You know what I'm saying? You said uh, different age groups. See, back in the day, 
we had our crew. He had his crew. Mm-hmm. You know, once we got a certain age, we started playing against each other. You know, but back, you know, when I was a kid, it, you know, it was kind of difficult. When you growing up in the neighborhood, you know, you got your guys, you meet up, you walk to the store, you go hoop, you go do whatever you do, and, and you know, you, you kind of hung with your age group. Right. So we, we we didn't we didn't compete a lot when when I when I was when I was a young kid, but you know, as we got old and and being on it like that level and start competing against each other, and yes, it was very very competitive. Um, and you know, I, I tell people all the time, you know, I mean. There's a difference when you you watching these guys and you actually getting out there with these guys, man. They don't they don't, they, don't, they don't hold no level, man. Yeah. Right. So, what was your recruitment like that senior year at Coos? I know you committed to Temple, but what other schools were you highly interested in that senior year? Well, um, I was I was Bert, well, Pete Hall's recruit me real heavy. PJ PJ Calissimo uh-huh. came to the house at home visit with him. Um, Wyoming was real big because we, when I played with Coolidge, we went to a Christmas tournament in Birmingham, Alabama, and Wyoming was there watching. And um, they actually, I actually visited Wyoming. Um, Wyoming was real, real high on me. Um, a lot of schools, man. But to be to be honest with you, after that Capital Classic game, a lot of options opened up, and um, I just actually like way that John I, I love John Cheney approach uh and, and the way he came at me. Of course a lot of people thought that it was automatic that I was going to Georgetown, but that wasn't the case. But mm-hmm. um uh John Cheney just he, and, he, he, he impressed myself and my moms. And uh it, it was just a great home visit from him and my uncle Fatty Teller was there also. Um they 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 actually know each other from my uncle going to LaSalle up in Philly so my uncle put a good word in for him also. And my, my visit to Temple was was was, was tremendous, man. I had a great time. Uh, Mark Mike, Mike, my host, had a great time. I, I, it, just, it was just something about Temple that I, that I love. But, of course, you know, I couldn't get in because of the Prop 48 thing. So I ended up going to a, a junior college in Texas by the name of Alvin Junior College. So let's just go back for a quick second. So the Temple recruitment opened up after the Capital Classic, or was it something that was there during your senior year? It was something that was there on the same year because, you know, Donald Hodge had went there. Right. And Donald Hodge went to Coolidge. Unfortunate, I didn't get a chance to play uh, with Donald at Coolidge because, you know, he was gone by the time I got there. Because, of course, I played that one year. That's all. Right. And uh, actually, you know, Don, but me and Donald always knew each other. And um, Donald had put the word in, man. And um, during midseason, you know, that midseason, my senior year, that's when Timbo started recruiting. Mm. So, the with your brother, you know, tearing it up at Georgetown that year, did you really want to go to Georgetown? Was that something you really wanted to kind of do and follow in his footsteps, possibly? No. Did know, you kind of want to go? In- I, I, I I never really wanted to go there, to be honest with you. And it, okay. And, and it was because of, you know, I mean, I mean um, you know, not saying I couldn't have the expectations, I just always wanted, wanted to, you know, just start my own path. And, right. You know, a lot of people thought it was automatic. And um, actually, you know, John came on late with the recruitment. He may have thought it was automatic also. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I just didn't want to, you know. And I also, I also, you know, was getting some great advice from, from a lot of older guys, man, just telling me I need to get away from home. Right. So, so just knowing me and knowing yeah. – you know, things that, that that could be so distracted to you. You know, I just don't think – I never thought that Georgetown would have been a proper spot for me to go to school. Got it. So, after Coolidge, you went to a JUCO in Texas. And how was that experience for you? Well, when I went out of Texas, um, got a good chance to uh, play with uh, Poncho Hodges, who was from D.C., uh, mm-hmm. from from DeMatha and Dunbar. Then he went to uh, – after Alvin Poncho going to Colorado State, played real well. Uh, Dirk Chandler from the uh was at Alvin Junior College. Um, Ondell Dixon, just to name a couple of area guys. Um, we, 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 we had a nice mob. We had a nice mob, man. I played a few games and, um, and just, you know, just, again, just lost focus, man. 
you know, back then, man, you know, I, you know, I was just way away from home, way mm-hmm. down, way down Alvin, yeah. Texas, you know, and um, which was like maybe, maybe an hour away from Houston, from the city, and uh, mm-hmm. just got, just, you know, just, just got caught up, man. Meaning, not caught up in trouble or nothing like that, but just. You know, I I just kind of I I started feeling like I needed to be somewhere else. You know what I mean? I just didn't understand how how powerful junior college ball was back then. So I mm-hmm. I kind of I kind of went through a phase where you know all my guys I played with in high school. I know I can I know I can play with these guys and just playing against certain guys from AAU tournaments and youth game tournaments. Like, come on, man! I'm down in junior college. You know, I yeah, man. So I I just I just hopped on the plane and left, man, and. <laughs> so was, was so was part of that your ego? No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say my ego. It was just. Mm-hmm. It was just a situation where when you, I just didn't. I just didn't understand. I just didn't understand the fact, you know, um, that I that I put I was that I put myself in that situation to have to go that route. You know. Got it. Um, and, the, and the competition was great. Don't get me wrong. The competition was great, man. Um, you know, and um. Just got lazy, man. Just kind of forgot the purpose, what I was there for. You know, I, I I would go to, you know, I would go to practice. I would go to the games, but I missed a few classes. You know what I'm saying? And, um, mm-hmm. You know, and and and, and uh, got called to the dean's office a couple of times. They gave they gave they gave me millions millions of chances, man, because they didn't want me to leave. And um, they wanted to help, man. But uh, I just rolled out, man. You know, uh, I I just got in the plane and left. So when I came home, my mom didn't even know I was coming home, and she was highly upset. And man, I came home and gained like, man, I gained like twenty five pounds, man. And I, I was just let me kind of play basketball. So you know. So you, were, so at that time you were kind of inactive. You kind of felt. Did you kind of fall out of love with the game at that time? Yeah, I kind of fell, I fell in love with the game, and then um, and at this time, particular time, this is when my brother. Was at was playing with the Celtics, right? So he called me up, and he was like, "Man, you need to come on up here." You know what I'm saying? Cause my mother was 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 highly upset. He was, oh man, she was pissed. You know what I'm saying? And um, and I I flew up to Boston. My brother flew me up. I stayed with him for a while, and um, just going to them them games, man, and and meeting guys like Larry Bird and Kevin McHale, Robert Parrish, and um. Just man, just seeing that atmosphere, I'm like, hold up, man. Let me get myself back together. So you know, I went so, back home. I went back mm-hmm. home and um, I, I actually lost. I, I actually lost at least twenty something pounds. I was working out every day, and uh, John Thompson gave me a call and was like, uh, you know, you, you you need to get yourself together. Blase, blase. So I said, fine. Uh, so he sent me to a, a junior college in Central Florida. That's the name of it, actually, Central Florida Junior College. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, I couldn't play that year, though, because I got there on the middle of the year. So I had to sit out. I had to sit out that semester, so I would have been eligible that following year. So I get to Central Florida. Great program, man. A program that was so great, man. Um, I got a chance to practice, but I just couldn't play. So um, what happened was, man, I, I'm up there. I'm, I'm feeling so, I'm feeling so good. I'm in shape. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Everything, man. Then of course, you know, then uh, the tragedy happened to my brother in Boston, and I kinda, right. like I kind of like lost it. You know what I mean? So here I am again in a great situation, and uh. That threw me a loop, so I actually caught the bus back from Florida to D.C. just to be with my family during that time. And right. Um, actually, you know, Central Florida Community College, they, they let me, you know, they gave me some time, and they expected me to come back. But I did. once again, once again, I got comfortable just being home. And uh, a few more months went by. A few more months went by, so. Now, now, I'm, now, now I'm really like now I'm taking I'm taking every chance in the world right now because you know your eligibility is shrinking, right? You know, um, the, the, the clock ticking. So once again, John Thompson again. You know, 
pulled me up. We met at Georgetown. He said, hey, look, man, it's your last chance right here. He said, this is your last and final chance. So he sent me to uh, a guy by the name of Washington, who's my coach at Drake University. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rudy had a lot of connections in the California Junior College area where he sent me to Compton Junior College. And, uh, you know, he was like, man, you know, if I send you down here, just give me your word, man, that you're going to come to Drake. He was like, I know what you do, man. You know, he was like, first of all, I hope you got it too. So uh, he said, man, I know you. He said, I've seen you play. I know you're going to rip the conference up. And uh, you can't sign with Drake right now because it, it's, it's against the rules. But can you give me your word that you're going to come to Drake? So I said, man, you got my word. It's all good. So I ended up going to Compton and it worked out great, man. But that then that's when the heaven came in when I went to uh, Compton Community College. So, so what schools at that time were looking at you at, when you were at Compton? I, I had USC, I had UCLA, Arkansas, UNLV. I mean, every school, man. I mean, it was it was it was crazy. It was super crazy because. They, because you, a lot, a lot of a lot of them big time schools, they really didn't think I can get it done because they looked at my history, and was like, mm -hmm. "This man left two junior college already." You know what I'm saying? So, what I, but by that time, I was so motivated and fed up. You know, I was like, my my whole determination was like, "Man, I gotta get this done." So, you know, end up doing real good, real good up Compton, um, and created some great friends, man, great atmosphere. And uh, ended up keeping my word with Washington. Ended up going to Drake, man. And it worked out well. You know, uh, great school, uh, great people at Drake, man. Morning hour. It was it, 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 it was really shocking to me to see that that's a actually great, you know, great place to be. You know, I'm coming from D.C. Right. So, you know, look, I'm, I'm, way, I'm way into morning hour. I don't know what's going on out here. But it turned out being really, really great, man. And, um, uh, had a, had a great junior year. Um, ended up getting player of the year at the Missouri Valley Conference. Newcomer of the year. Newcomer of the year. Um, first player in the conference ever lead the league in scoring steals and assists. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and got and got got laid back. Now here here I am again with the same old story. <laughs> Came, so let's let's just before you let's just go back for a second. So you were you're from DC. You went to Compton. What was that experience like, especially doing? I guess that's the early '90s. What was that's that environment great, like for you? That's a great question because um, the things we hear about Compton, just watching you know, the NWAs and the, you know, all that the Ice Cubes and all that, the gang banging stuff and everything. And um, so actually, when I went out there, you know, when the guys. You know, I started meeting people, and when they seen, you know, he's like, "You from D.C.?" So they man, yeah, man, y'all crazy about D.C., man. And, <laughs> right. And, my, and I'm in my mind, I'm saying, I, 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 <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it kind of, mm -hmm. it kind of put me in the mindset to really, to really be appreciative to come out of D.C. and survive, survive, man, the uh, hostile environments. For mm -hmm. For, for us to think that Compton was crazy and for me to go out there and they think that we're crazy and I'm like, you know, that, that that to me was shocking because I came I came from a a, a, a very hostile neighborhood, man, and um, just, just to get out that neighborhood and survive and to be able to go to school, you know, that woke me up. Compton woke me up. Man. It woke my whole mindset up. Uh, it, it just woke me up, man. Uh, it, it woke my whole... Like I said, man, it just got me ready for a lot of stuff. So when I went to Compton, I was basically just it was it was like in the military. And I, I got up six o'clock every morning. I, I I ran three, four miles. I went to the gym. I was in best shape, best shape of life, man. And I was mm -hmm. I was determined I was determined to just stay focused, man, and just being around some great a great coach, the uh rest in peace in the quarter, uh great teammates, man. And um yeah, man, it, 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 it woke me up, actually. It actually woke me up, to be honest with you. So so let's go back to your, your year at Drake. So I, I took a look at your stats, and you took you took 18 shots a game. 
<laughs> he took about five threes a game. You know how many shots Trey Young took that one year at Oklahoma per game? Uh, no. He took he took nineteen. So you was you was definitely putting it up. <laughs> the, only the only difference is he took ten threes. You took five. Right. So right. My, my question to what? you. When, uh -huh. when you got to Drake, did they kind of just give you the green light to go? Or was it something that you kind of worked your way in and you kind of proved yourself early and then it kind of went from there? No, I, I actually, he gave me the green light. He, my coach, Rudy, he gave me the green light to break. And it was a great situation because he did exactly the same thing my junior college coach at Compton told the guys. from when I, when I, I'm, I'm going to just go back a little bit at Compton. When I got there uh, in September, we were playing pickup games. And, um, mm -hmm. and I was just lighting it up, you know, lighting it up. So the first day of junior college, first day of comp and practice, coach set the whole team down. It was like, you know, this, this, this is Kurt's team. He got the green light. And um, and it was the same situation. That, you know, Rudy, Rudy told the guys off the break, man, he got the green light. And when you, when you get that, when you hear that from a coach, when he's saying it in front of the whole team, mm-hmm. It gives you that you it, it, it just gives you that fire, man. And like you know, in your mind is like like it's nothing you can do wrong, man. You know, you're not you're not hesitant about nothing. So when you when you have a coach <laughs> the whole team that you got you got the green light and, and, the, and the whole team accepted it, that was great for me. Have you ever been on a team where you didn't where you didn't have a green light? Didn't Ferrello give you the green light too? Yeah, Ferrello gave me the green light. Um <laughs> <laughs> oh, but actually, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, 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 with the green light, I, I always been a team guy. Though. You know, I always been a team guy, and um, I always had great team, and I just always had leadership skills where it it wasn't only the green light, the basketball. It was just I just always surrounded by guys that were actually listening, mm -hmm. and I. I would listen to them. You know, I, I, I mean, I, I was always a leader. Though. I, I, I would give myself some credit on that part as far as the green light. It wasn't like I was selfish, you know what I mean? Right. But uh, so, and, and, mm -hmm. and off, the, off the court as well, I made sure that my guys were straight. So, you know, I always looked at myself. And um, and that was just, that, that's from learning from my brother and my Uncle Fatty and them guys, man. So, a question for you I have is, you're, you're one of the very rare people that we've probably seen in this area who can go from the one and the two and almost play it seamlessly. So do you kind of consider yourself a point guard or do you consider yourself just a basketball player who could play both positions equally well? Because we've seen you fill it up playing off. We've seen you fill it up playing on the ball as well. But we've also seen you facilitate, have double-digit assist games, lead your teams to huge victories and things like that. So what? how do you view yourself as a player? Well, great great question because uh, we were just talking about this the other day amongst some of my friends. And um, I just consider myself as a basketball player who can play the point guard, though. Okay. You know, meaning if we need one, I can get you one. Uh, I can set this offense if we need to do that. Um, if, if I see something that we can – make happen, I can do it also. So I, I never really considered myself as a pure point guard. But mm -hmm. uh I, I would consider myself as a basketball player. But in some situations now, depending the the the, uh, the team, the system or whatever. Now I've been in some situations where I just had to be a point guard. You know what I mean? Where I didn't have to take a lot of shots and things like that. But it's just good to know that I can I can do, I can play you know one or two, or oh, like give you a prime example. Um, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun or not, but I played in the USBL with right. uh, with uh, my first stint in the USBL was with uh, on the John Lucas and Dirk Minifield team, and we ran a three guard off with myself, Anderson Hunt from UNLV, and Chris Childs from the New York. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Coach Minifield should always tell us, all y'all, we just playing basketball. You know what I'm saying? Whoever get it, just go. Mm -hmm. But in certain situations, you know, I would actually 
be the point guard. You know what I'm saying? In in in, in clutch time, but just, just, and, and that still just goes back to being able to learn from guys like my brother, you know, guys like Sherman Douglas, uh, like my uncle at Rodney Wright, uh, Hall of Fame point guard. I, I mean, just guys like that. Man, I just watching. I, I I just I just actually always watch basketball. I never watch one position. Mm-hmm. You know, because I just knew how to make plays, and I and I always studied my team to see you know wh- wh- where to get the rock at. You know, but don't give them to my dad because you know he can't do nothing with it. So I I, I didn't really <clears throat> myself as a basketball player. So you know, during this time you're at Drake, and you know prior prior to you going to the USBL. You're coming home. You're playing Kenner League. You're playing uh, Urban Coalition. Um, what are some of your fondest memories about those those days, those summers? Oh man, that's that's ever man. Um, let me let, let me go to the Urban Coalition first. Mm-hmm. You know, as a kid, man, just growing up, going up there to watch one of my mentors, Ducky Vaughn. Man, that was crazy, man. I mean, I just see Ducky just put up numbers, man. Um, Ducky has been a big part of my life also, man. Just teaching me, you know, D- D- Ducky is actually a part of my family. You know, he, he he's like he's 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 like the uncle that's not related. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's very close to my family. Um just I just remember going up there watching him play, man. I can remember, you know, just watching Ducky, man, and um just backing guys that being being his height. And walking out there with like fifty and sixty points, and I always say, "Man, I can't get my chance to get get be able to do that." So the first time I even played the Urban Coalition, man, in the senior division, because I I don't know if a lot of people had a junior division back then too, a high school division. Right. Um, I played in that also, but I just couldn't wait to get on that big stage. And my very first game, I had like thirty-seven. I used to always say, "Man, I walk, walk by that concession stand." And, you know, it was so much of an organized league. They had the top scores up there on the wall. Right. I just always wanted to be on that wall, man. And um, I looked at there one day, man, and um, I was the second leading scorer behind the screen. And, and I'm looking like, man, I just couldn't wait to that day, man. Urkel Ur- Ur- was out of fire in me, man, because the atmosphere was beautiful. Uh, the fan base, man, the community. So organized. The Wiggins family was such, such they, they they did such a great job with organizing that Urban Coalition, man. And, and the years they put in with that, man, it, it was crazy. Yeah, the Urban Coalition, man, that, that that's great for you to even mention. That was, I mean, that's the best. I, I, I haven't seen anything like that. I haven't seen anything like that. Yeah, yet, I, but I think every I, I think every everybody says that about the Urban. Yeah, no no question, man. No question. It'd be great, man. To but get you something. have. Go ahead, I'm listening. Now I, I, I said, I said it'd be great to get that back, man. That that was that was tremendous, man. But you also had some highlights in the Kenner League as well. So any fond memories from McDonough? Yeah, Mc, McDonough was more so, more so, back then. Now McDonough was more so college wise. McDonough, mm-hmm. the, the Kenner League actually grew into pros playing up there later years. Because a, a lot of people don't remember the Ken League, the, it was a draft. You had to get drafted in the Ken League and they put you on teams. It wasn't like you can get your own team. Right. So at a draft and you just go up and play with the guys who, you know, the team you were drafted on, which was which was great back then because guys would come home from college and um competition was great. I had a great, great time, you know, playing in the Ken League. And as I got older, uh, when the pros stopped playing, it, it became very exciting. And um, I remember um, San Cassell, them coming down and playing. Uh, Steve Francis and the pro guys, Dave Van the pro guys. And at that time, I was like tip-top shape and was just ready for, for everything, man. And uh, we had a game. We had a big-time game. Jeff Brooks, it, it, it actually wasn't a game season. Jeff Brooks had called me. He was like, Kirk, man, what you think? Let's get let's get this crowd up there, man. And I, he said, Look, man, what you think about you and Steve? You and Steve getting your own team and just playing on a weeknight. 
like a Thursday night. Mm-hmm. So I say, uh, sound like a good idea. Let's make it happen. So this was like a week and a half before the game. So he called. He called Steve. So Steve agreed to it. So we picked our players. So Jeff called me back. He was like, "Man, I don't know who you got, man, but he said, even I'm loaded." So I said, "Jeff, you know one thing about me. I don't. I don't think about that, man." So he said, Jeff say, "Man, they got Steve. They got Hey Vanderpool. They got." Uh, Jihadi White, they got Moochie Norris, they got Catino Mobley. They, I mean, they had man, they, they got up. I mean, every all of the pros at the time. So, so, so Jeff said, Who you got? <laughs> I said, Man, I got the old guys, man. I said, I got myself. I said, I got my brother Charles, I got John Turner, I got Mark Tillman, I got Daryl Proof. I said, Man, we ain't tripping off them guys. So Jeff was like, man, you sure? I said, man, we not talking about you guys, Jeff. So we get up there, man, damn pack. And I looked down that left line. I said, yeah, they got, they, 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 they NBA down there. <laughs> so, so back then, man, that would juice me up. I let, one thing about them summertime, man, I see them pros coming. I'm, I'm, I'm man, I'm like, okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna leave them with something to think about. So mm-hmm. of course, you know. Coming, coming from where we come from, it was a lot of heavy bet, a lot of heavy betting on that game, man. And um, and uh, a buddy of mine, uh, he came to me for the game. He was like, "Man, nigga, one bet five thousand, Joe." Mm-hmm. I said, "Man, bet him." He said, "You sure?" I said, "Man, bet him." I said, "We not tripping off them, man." So he went up there, bet that money. We walked out there with that. I walked out with six and we partied all night. Had a great time. <laughs> and uh, it, 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 it was just a sign to say, man, you know, I mean, you, 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 you're not showing me up. And it's, all due respect to that, because we all, we all are great friends right now. And we, mm-hmm. still, and we still stay in touch. And, uh, and it's not like I'm saying, see, a lot of people overlook the fact that. Them guys, them guys were doing a lot of things that night too. They, they, they were playing really good. It was a great game. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I was just determined to walk out there with that win. You know, we, we, we and, and, and you got to think the guys on my team, they, they have been there before also. So they were nobody was starstruck. Right. And that's the thing I like about growing up in DC. We, we, we not, we, we, we don't trip off of names. So I have a question for you. Um, we know about your matchup at the Kenner League with Steve, but also, you know, with you being really good in the area for so long and being back and forth in, you know, in the area, did you ever have any run-ins with Allen Iverson during that period where he was here? Well, I, he was I, Allen had came down. John, John, John had called me and was like, uh, you know, I want you to come up here and check check the young boy Iverson out. Because I, I heard mm-hmm. about him. You know, a lot of highlights, you know what I'm saying? A lot of highlights. I was like, I said, Coach, he can really play, man. He was like, man, just come on up. And, you know, we, we playing today. So, Georgetown always been invitation only. You know, invitation only that you can come mm-hmm. and actually play. So, I went up there and, um, uh, you know, the games go to five at Georgetown by ones. And, you know, you, you man, you, every possession, every possession. So um, he matched me up against Iverson, and it, and and and, and it, it was like the first, the first, the first game, of, the first game of the day, and um, like I said once again, don't matter who you are, man, don't matter who you are. I I, I did what I normally do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, and um, he he he, he was just young. He, he he was kind of wow, you know what I'm saying. So it, it it wasn't too much of a a situation where. I had to worry about a lot of things because I knew I knew he was there trying to prove himself for one, which, which, mm-hmm. which that's always been Bubba Chuck, bad bad boy, you know. And I always, when I play pickup games, I play to win. So it wasn't like I was against him, you know what I mean. So I was making the right plays to get this win because the games go to five. I wanted to stay on the court. 
you know, so we, right. we, we myself, uh, back, back then, uh, back then, was it Red? Nah, it wasn't Reggie. A couple other guys, first time players. We end up, we end up running the gym that whole day. And uh, John was like, you know, t- t- telling Al, you know, like, you know, th- th- these guys are out here trying to win. Now, as far as the one on one matchup, the one on one matchup, game go to five. You know, I probably had three. He probably had about three, even matchup. But I, I, mm. I, I take the winner in every day. I, I stayed in the court the whole day that day. So you, so he didn't, he didn't get you off the court at all. No. no. So, what has been your toughest matchup in this area? And I'm, I'm not including anybody from Baltimore. Just give me somebody from my area, DC, PG, Moco. I just want to know who's giving you the hardest time. Don't. Don't take me all the way back. Don't take me all the way back to high school. No, 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 I'm gonna say this to you, right? I'm gonna say. This. <laughs> so look, I, I, I'm gonna say this to you, right? You said, you said you ain't gonna make the Baltimore like it's somebody Baltimore had problems with. No, I'm just saying, don't no, don't, don't give me anybody. I'm, I'm just, don't I'm, give I'm, me I'm, don't I'm, don't I'm, bring I'm, up Muggsy. <laughs> don't bring up Muggsy because we know that you guys had some battles. But yeah. give me some. I want somebody that's documented. I want somebody in the area. Who's giving you a tough matchup? Well, I would say, I would say, of course, Henry Hall, one of, one of the most pro- prolific scores I've ever seen in my life. Okay. Uh, very, very, very hard to guard, Henry. Man, he's strong, uh, deadly jump shot, deadly range. You know, uh, Henry Hall definitely. Uh, man, my brother, of course. Uh, Sherman, mm-hmm. Sherman was a tough cover because you know one thing about Sherman, man. You can watch Sherman play, and you you would think you would think that 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 you can get away with stuff, but Sherman, Sherman, Sherman was a bad boy, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Clint Venable was, was a tough matchup. You know, just just the name of, it. but you know, that's why I love the competitiveness from from our area, man. Whenever I think, whenever you step on the court, it's a tough matchup. To be honest with you, man. So, so here's the thing. A couple of weeks ago, I interviewed Henry, uh-huh. right? And in talking to him, I told him I had this theory about you because we talked about you and you know your friendship. You guys knowing each other for a long time, and I told him that you really only you only really respect two basketball players, and that's Henry and your brother. <laughs> and the, the first thing you did just now, Henry and your brother. Right. <laughs> so, and I kind of also was telling him, I think that I heard you say one time that you were kind of in the middle where you didn't really have too many peers. Your brother and Sherman were older and the, the younger guys coming under you were significantly maybe four, four or five years younger than you. So you kind of, had your own lane. So what I always wonder, I know you respect Henry, I know you respect your brother, I know you respect Sherman Douglas, but out of that, those younger guys, give me one guy that you really respect his game from our area. Uh, just think, one. And, just, and a guard. Let me get a guard. Just one, just one guy? Just one guy. I just want one guy who you really respect, a younger guy, and I want a guard. Just give me one. Man, I would have to say Moochie Norris, man. Mm-hmm. Who's very, very underrated, man. Like very underrated. I mean You think you think Moochie is underrated? Yeah, I really I really do. I, I think why why you say that? I, because um you know You mean on the national scale or do you mean because locally I think everybody knows how tough he is. But you mean on a national scale? Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say locally because you know it's, it's been a lot of basketball conversations been going on since this pandemic, right? And mm-hmm. it's been a lot of, um, you know, a lot of shows, a lot of podcasts, and a lot of, a lot of, you know, a lot of basketball talk, man. And, and, and Mushi name don't come up enough, That's you know. I, and I'm hearing, I'm hearing these shows, man. And um, I think that people are actually forgetting about Mushi knows this boy was bad, man. Yeah, I he, mean, he was that. He he was naturally gifted, you know. Just, just I mean, and Mucci Mucci just 
come. He just like play basketball. Mm-hmm. And can and can go against anybody that you put him up. And like I said, we had a um, USBL team back in the day, the, the Wash the Washington team. And uh, myself, Moochie, Greg Jones, and us, man, we we went a three guard offense. And uh, actually, Mike Powell at the time, mm-hmm. nice mob, man, with the, with, with the good with the great coach McGleese. And uh, Mooch, man, Mooch, Mooch, played a big part, man, in that um, in that in that in that role, and it kind of reminded me, like I told you, when I like I mentioned earlier, when I was playing with the Anderson and Chris Childs, when it was mm-hmm. when it was me, Mooch, and Greg, myself, Mooch, and Greg, it kind of brought me back to the days. Any, any one of us can actually play point guard and take over a game, and it it was games that Moochie that actually took over, man, and actually put me in put me in comfortable positions. For me to do my thing, you know, like that that year I ended up he played the whole league. And and I and I gotta give uh Mooch and Greg a lot of credit for that. Well, speaking on him, I watched him in high school, so and I saw him become a semi pro and then I saw him become a pro. I think that he probably had the biggest jump out of anybody from high school to being a semi pro to being a pro as far as what he could do. He came home one summer and he was almost unguardable. Like I mean, he was just running through everybody. Yeah, no, no doubt, man. So That's like, he, mm-hmm. Go ahead, I'm listening. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you now. I can edit that. Part. I can edit that part out. Go ahead. I, I, I don't think Mooji get. I, I just that's just me. I mean, like I said, like I I, I watch a lot of these podcasts, not these shows, man. I don't mm-hmm. know that name enough, man. Yeah, that's that's crazy to me because he's he's definitely one of the more talented players we've had and, and, in this area. And also to get to that, to get to the highest level and be successful and hang around, man. That's tough. Yeah. That I mean, but he he got to the pros, and you know this because you watch it. He changed his game, right? No, no, no that's, you know that, I mean? that, that, that's 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 why that's and I, and I think you know, and you got to think about this when, when when you when you're talking basketball to certain people in certain groups, mm-hmm. you 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 just said something that was very important that a lot of people don't understand. That man changed his game. And it also, that's the reason why it shows you how effective he is. When you can, mm-hmm. when you can change your whole game, when you when you can change your whole game, and 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 and, and get to the next, get to that next level, man, man, you you bad boy, man. So I want to go back to you for a second. I think that you know a lot of people we talk about your buckets, but some of the things that are kind of underrated about you. I don't think we talk about your handle enough, and I don't think we talk about your athleticism enough. So what what are your thoughts about that? Because, you know, I've, I've seen you catch hoops. <laughs> People say that, you know, you you might not be the most athletic, but I think they may have caught you towards the, the towards the end of it. Right. And you may not – right. do, you, do you view yourself as being extremely quick? Did you did you think of yourself being quick or more crafty? I, 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 was, I would say more crafty than anything, like um, – you know, and like you mentioned, as far as like the athleticism, a lot of people. I, I was sneaky athletic. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like, like, like. You know, I would be somewhere back in the day. I catch a lob, and you got. Oh, I ain't know you can dunk. Right. I, I mean, I, I, that just wasn't in my arsenal to do it all. You know, to, to actually go out there and just dunk the basketball because I, they, I, I scored. You know, the basketball. You know, I, I just. I and, and as far as the handles. You know, I, I give credit or all, all, all due credit to the crossovers and everything like that. You can go back to guys like my neighborhood guys like Polish Frost, um, Troy Wilkins and them guys, uh, Pep Tyson, uh, Tutu, Greg and all them guys, man. Uh, you know, I, I'm not pretty much known for crossovers and uh, the hands up like them guys are, but it wasn't nothing I couldn't do with that basketball. Right. Was like the crossover, but all mine was just, I, I didn't use it a lot because I was just always taught just go past your man with, with any move you can use. But I can get with the tricks and all that, but that just 
wasn't my game, but I I I had I had everything in my arsenal. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just wish I can get some of my uh, Virginia College footage, man. And, um, you know what I'm saying? I I I probably average pay, probably uh, a dunk or two early ever game or something like that. You know what I mean? But um, at Compton or in Texas, at Compton or in Texas, or both. That's in Compton. In Compton. And okay. um, you know, I mean, in in pickup games, you know, I didn't. You know, I, I, I didn't court lobs and everything, but a lot of people who haven't seen it don't believe it because, like you said, they caught me later on in my career, you know, playing down the farms. Like, you know, when I was in the farms, I, I was done. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I was done. Like, me, meaning done, done meaning I just wasn't the same. You know what I mean? You know, five a time undefeated. And then right. you got guy, oh, man, he ain't that good. He ain't that good. Man, I'm man, I'm thirty something years old. I'm mid thirties. I'm playing again. I'm playing. Here's when I got. I just brought Taiwan Lawson and Kevin Durant down there with down these young kids. And I'm old, man. Let them go. You know what I'm saying? I mean, shit, yeah. I, 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 ain't, I ain't the same. I'm not the same, Kurt Smith, no more. And and, and it's crazy. So, it's crazy because these young guys still trying to get man, man. They who man? I'm not. Look, you're not gonna get no name off of me. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, okay, man, I'm done, man. You ain't got no. I'm done. I now, and I tell you one thing. What bet? Nobody bet not challenge my horse now. I, I now I do that. <laughs> I, That's what you're doing now. You're doing yeah, horse. Yeah, I, I'm doing horse all day long. Now. I, I I can knock a shot down, but I ain't, I ain't running that court though. You know what I'm saying? I ain't doing none of that. So so let me ask you. We always hear about you playing for the bag. You know, you had your little run when y'all was having those money games. Um, any one-on-one games for you for money? Any big-time or well-known players you may have played one-on-one, or were you more so just a five-on-five, three-on-three type of guy? Man, the funny part about it, and, and I'm not even, I'm not even, um, I'm being real serious with you, man. And, and man, you, 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 you right on point with these questions. Hey, I, I, I got, hey, I, I, I got to put you up there, man. With uh, we got to sit there and talk, man, and. and, and, and Interview somebody together. You asking good. You asking good questions, man. Because you, you're actually asking questions that's that that me and my guys we've been we've been just talking about, just rapping about. Mm-hmm. Like recently, uh, you got these one on one battles going on right now with the um my boy, my 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 my, my young fella, man, my one of my heart and souls, man, Trey Kelly. He, he, he you know they they got these one on one battles going right now. Uh, my guy mm-hmm. Quinn Cook. And then started some things on Instagram, and me and him been rapping. Um, you know, to be honest with you, man, I couldn't get a one-on-one game back in the day. Oh wow! I couldn't. I mean, I I couldn't get a, a one-on-one money game back in the day. I couldn't. I'm, I'm, and this is I'm being very honest with you. I couldn't get a one-on-one game back then. Now, as far as the money, the five-on-five games, you know, we we did a lot. We did a lot of neighborhood five-on-five games, and actually back then. We had a when I was playing with the Madness team. Well, man, Larry from Madness. We used to go like to Atlantic City, to Philly, New York, the real money games. You know what I'm saying? Like the the, the duffel bags. Mm-hmm. We had a team man, that was incredible. Uh, myself, Melvin Middleton, Bootney Green, uh, and Boot Bootney was on. Yeah, hello. You faded out again. Booty, Booty, Booty was unstoppable. Um, we had Tim Anderson, Dave Butler, Michael Graham. I mean, John. Man, we had mobs. Man, that was going to Atlantic City and Philly, playing. For, I'm some. I'm some on money. Where you know where they and they count. You know what I'm saying? And you you, you getting the, you, you getting the rental cars, man. You, and you just getting cash in hand. Man, and, um, so, so I mean, woo, boy, that's crazy, man. I mean, them, now those were the real money guys. So you don't consider the ones you played locally, but you don't. You think those where you traveled, those were bigger than the ones you played locally for the money? Yeah, I, because yeah, because it was more money involved. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like you know, got it. you know, you know, back then, you know, you get you playing two hundred dollars a man or three, some you know things like that. Then not, not saying you couldn't use that money back then. 
in right. general, like the real money, the, the real money games were, you know, the games like that. You know what I'm saying? And, and and you know, I look I look at right now, I just see the difference in, you know, and and and, and, and every time we talk about the, the differences between now and then, mm-hmm. it, it becomes misunderstood by the, 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 the town people because they think we're not giving them credit. You know, I the, the only the only the only part I see the, the part that I really see is like we had so much competition back then, man. It, mm-hmm. it was just super crazy. And, and do you mean locally or do you mean when you travel? Local. You mean locally? Local, 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 local. Okay. Local. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and now, now I, I will say this: there's some talented young fellas out here today. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it's great that we're on the subject, and, and I'm glad. I'm glad that um, I'm getting to explain what I mean on, on, on this on this show right now because maybe folks in this era or this generation will get what I'm saying. So it it, it was a situation where when I don't I don't know if you. All the, all, all the animosity on Quinn Cook's Instagram where all these guys were matching up, matching up playing one-on-one, playing one-on-one. You know, like... Yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw some of it. Mm-hmm. Some pro guys playing against some local guys is not in the league. And woo, woo. So, my my thing was... My thing was this. Now, you got all these pros right now that's locally, right? Mm-hmm. That's in the league. And these guys some bad dudes. And they come home in the summertime. They don't play in the summer leagues because, for one, this, this is me. This is my opinion on what you know. This is me. I think the difference between back then and now. These pros, the pros back then, play every summer because they looked at guys that worked in the league. They looked at they looked at guys like us as competition. Right, you know, we 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 were playing overseas. We were we were we were getting invited to NBA camp. So we 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 were well known and respected on the same level they were. It's just they were in the league, so they they were coming home calling like, "Man, we y'all hooping today." So now these guys come home that's in the pros. It's like it's like to them, it's no challenge because it's like they're not going to take risk. I'm 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 gonna play against this guy. But, but where's this guy's resume at? Right. You know what I'm saying? Where did he play? Is, is there anything on his resume and that he played somewhere? And that's the difference. So I I, I kind of got to be careful when I say stuff like that because people take it the wrong way and thinking I'm saying that them guys can't play. But right now, it's like these pro guys don't have nobody to really play against. I mean, they, they, they can go to the gym and just play against a guy that just played on the farms every day. I mean, go down. Watch. But at some, but at some point, isn't that what wasn't Sam Cassell in the league when he was playing against, and Muggsy was in the league when they were playing against you guys? Yeah, but the, the, look, look, I think you missed my point. We all mm-hmm. we all were playing overseas. We were doing something. We were in NBA camps. Oh, I see what you're saying. You yeah, mean yeah. actual semi pro? Semi pros, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying. We, we, not just actual, not just actual guys. Right. We, we were, we, we, <laughs> right. we were in the it. same, same situations they were in. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like th- th- that's my. See, that's why I say I got to be careful when I make that statement or make my, make my point because people will take it personal and think that I'm saying it in a certain way. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, know, you, you had. <laughs> You, you had guys like you, you. You have professional teams like come on out, come on out, Bowie State, uh, and come and play today. And they they're, they're asking guys like us to do it, versus two because we had, we had resumes, right? You know what I'm saying? You, you you got and I'm not and like I said, it's not a knock on these other guys. It's not a knock but on I, these I, other I, guys. You know what I'm saying? I and, um, I think um, the communi- communication has changed too, though. The, the, the communication so, has changed. Your your communication was directly to you for an invite. Come run with us. Quinn Cooks Live is open to anybody, and he kind of opened up that platform where those people who you know not I'm not knocking anyone who may not have the resumes that you're talking about have an open 
challenge to him. And now he has this open challenge, and he, what is he going to do? He's going to back down from the challenge in front of everybody? No, 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 no. I think you're missing my point. I'm not saying he's supposed to back down. No, but but at the same time, you know, at this day and age, you got you also got to think about this. At this day and age, right? And I and I told Quinn this. You know, you 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 got to you got to protect you got to protect your 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 your, your, your uh. Your your, your 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 living arrangements, man. You got you got to you got to protect your income. You got to protect everything. Meaning, it's just not the same. It's not the same. Meaning that that you don't have. And I'm not saying don't take the challenge. It's up to you. You do what you want to do. So you you do right. that. So, but the point I'm making is, just say you go out there and and, 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 and do something, and something happens to you. I mean, that, we, change, we, that changes everything. You ain't got nothing to prove. Right. You know, and, 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 these right. Guys, and I love these guys. Don't get me wrong, because I, 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 would, I would be crazy to to not support them guys that's not in a league because I run the summer league. I have a summer league with guys that 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 just want just want to get some bump. I understand that. You know what I'm saying? But I also would, would like to protect these guys that's in, in, in the league and doing their thing because – I just don't think it's going to improve. You know what I'm saying? Like, get the bump, but at the same time, I mean, what, 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 what's in it for you? No, I get you. But I want to go back to something you said, though. So, Because you said you couldn't find a one-on-one -on -one game. So what, is, what are you saying when you say that? Are you saying people were scared to match up with you in that instance? Because I know the crowd you ran with, and I know they would gladly put the money up for you. No, so, I, 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 I know I'm scared. No, I'm not saying that at all. I, no, I'm not. No, I'm so what? Not, so what you? What you saying there? No, I, I just couldn't get a game. I mean, I, I wasn't out there. I wasn't out there. I wasn't out there asking for games. I wasn't doing that. Right. And, and no, and nobody challenged me. It's just like my name never came up. Come on, come on, come on. No, I'm, I mean, I'm just being real with you. My name. Your name, your name. Your name is ringing for some some after some for almost no, two decades. I'm saying my name never came up. Was let's play one on one or my man against your. It never came up. And it, 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 if it's something you if it's something you heard, let me know. Nah, I've, I've never heard of you playing one on one. I, I'm, that's, so, that's, okay, that's, so, that's, I'm, that's so I'm, I'm giving you facts. No, nah, it's true. I'm not disputing. I'm just, now, I'm just been, questioning why, been, no, why, nobody, was taking, why been, nobody was taking shot at you. I'd have been in nightclubs. I'd have been in nightclubs with motherfuckers. I mean, with, with, excuse my language. They talking trash. And uh, mm -hmm. oh man, my man over here. I, I mean, I never, I never got, I never got that challenge. Did they have a resume that you speak of? Did that person have a resume? I, have, I mean, the point I'm making is, I never got a challenge, so I don't know if they had or not. It, gotcha. it was nobody nice. said, man, man, the, 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 the guys that I'm ro rolling with, it, it was nobody ever said, and your man, your man won't play, your man won't play Kurt one on one for the cash. I never got that. Got it. So I got one more question before we go to what you're doing now, because I know you you want to talk about what you got coming up, and also I want to talk to you about the Watch League. But I, I was talking to Greg, and this popped up, and I, I just want to know your opinion. T-Roy or Pep, who you taking as the better player? As, as, as a better player? As a better player. Not, we're not talking – we're just talking about as a better player. I'm, 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 I'm going to have to go – I'm going to have to go with T-Roy. That's the same thing I said. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with T-Roy, and, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, and I love Pep gang. Oh, man, Pep, Pep got oh Pep a bad boy. Pep is a bad guy, and and, and um he, he he can book him. Both of them, both you know, both of them have flashes where they got the, they got the excitement to it, and they got the the the, the flashiness. They got the they got the oohs and the ahs and everything. But just for me, to just watching T Roy throughout the years, and um, you know, and and and. and Taking him on the road with me and sending him just in certain situations. Shorty can calm it down. Not saying that Pep can't though. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I just seen T Roy in situations where he doesn't have to 
it's, 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 it's some players that have to do that. They, 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 they have to play from what they're known from, from, from what they're known for. So, right. T. Roy, T. Roy didn't have to. Hello? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, you get you, you, T. Roy didn't have to make the crowd go on off. And mm-hmm. I've seen Pep play some great games, some great games. And I always tell Pep, man, if you can just tone it down a little bit, you know what I'm saying, and, and just play a little regular, you know what I'm saying? Now, 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 don't get me wrong. Pep is on my list as a bad dude now. Don't get me wrong on that. No, no, no. We, we're not saying that because I, I just want to clear that up, too, because people are listening. Greg didn't pick between the two. I brought it up to him because it, you know, came across. I was like, Pep, you know, T-Roy. And I, I picked T-Roy or whatever, over Pep. Not to say that he wasn't a great player like what you're right, saying. Right, right. But I, I just want to make sure that known that Greg didn't, you know, he didn't pick between but the Greg, two. Well, people, well, you know, I, I, I tell mad. Greg all the time. I tell <laughs> Greg all the time, all right? I still don't get no answer out of Greg, man. I, and, and, that, and that's my, hey, that is my guy we talk all the time. You ain't going to get no answer. When, when you ask him about players who you taking, nah, Greg, Greg, Greg. Yeah. Because he's such a good guy. He, he, I got Greg looking, man. I don't want, uh-uh, you ain't get me like that. But I'm a, I'm yeah. a little different with it. Like, if, 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 if a guy can't accept your opinion or whatever, man, it, it ain't, it, hey, hey, man, it, it ain't, I, we ain't cool if we can't accept my opinion. I feel you. So, you know, if you played Herbo at the height, you played the Farms probably at the height, you probably played Kenner League at the height, of their popularity. Um, what were some of the other maybe lesser known tournaments that you played in in DC that um, people may not have known about that you kind of went and played in and had a some pretty good bump? Man, I got one 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 that stands out to me is that LaSalle, man. Woo. Yeah. The outdoor tournament. Yeah, that LaSalle, was tough. LaSalle was tough. They was bumping up there, man. And Emory also, Emory outdoor tournament. Uh, mm-hmm. em- I-, I-, I would say Emory and LaSalle, man, they, woo, they was jamming up there, man. They was jamming up there. And I, and I-, and I always joke with Miles, and I always call Miles, and we-, we laugh and joke all the time. I-, I-, I call Miles the late bloomer in basketball. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you know, and-, and I-, I give, I man, the-, the-, the work he put in over there, that good man, man, from-, from from getting it to, to-, to the level, to-, to level right now. Yeah. That's great hard work from him, but that LaSalle and that, and that Emory back in the day, man, w- w- was really nice, man. Really nice. Mm-hmm. And and the, so, one, the one thing about LaSalle and Emory, I think that separates from the farms is people came to LaSalle and Emory to actually watch basketball. To watch it. Right. The farms have became so big where people just come just to hang out. You know, just just to be an atmosphere. It's, it's an event. It's exactly, more so an event exactly, than a exactly, than a game. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But, but I think also that might have something to do with the setting, because it does sit, you know, Emory sits on Georgia, but not in actually in a community the kind of. Yep, if you, yep. yeah, yeah, exactly. And neither does LaSalle. But I think you know I agree with you. What he's done. Definitely put in a lot of hard work at the Goodman. So I kind of wanted to ask you, what's the status of the Watts League now? Um, I believe you're commissioner of the Watts League. Right. Right. What are we looking at? Are we going to see any action in 2020, or is 2020 canceled altogether because of COVID? Man, you know, right now they, they actually they actually just put the court they just put our courts up a few days ago. So right now I'm 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 just I'm man I'm, I'm just actually following proper protocol. If I get if I get a call from office saying that we can go, you know, I, I, I would have to, you know, say whatever they need me to do, we're going to do it, we got to do it the proper way, but right now, you know, right now, man, it, it, I guess it's not looking good, you know what I mean, because it, a lot of stuff not looking good, but I, I'm, I'm actually looking right. at, um, um, I was watching, I've been watching that TBT thing, right, mm-hmm. and man, that, that thing going on so great, and I, I and I was just, I, I, had a, I had a vision today. I was watching it today. And I was thinking, going back to the conversation, that, you know, going back to when we were talking about the Urban Coalition. And myself, knowing, knowing that Wiggins crew, on how they put their love and passion into the Urban Coalition, 
I'm, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure if if this was going on, if they were still standing and doing their thing up there, man, I think that they would they would find a way to make that herbal happen because they, because of their passion for it, and they would they would they, they would take their time, they would take their finances, they would take their connections and try to make things like that happen. Right now, there's so much going on right now, whereas. In, in, in the DC area, man, it's crazy, man. We, we, we still get knees. Man, we, 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 we just got to get better as a whole. But at the same time, not nah, right now, you know, it's just everything's at a standstill, man. But I, right now, I, we, 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 we'll be under the lights right now, playing, man, right now while we're on this phone. What does Kurt Smith have upcoming um, right now in his, in his uh, career, I guess? Well, right now, man, um, you know, of course, the watch, the watch League and also the Red Cup album, which our next interview would be uh, Curtis Malone. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, the founder of DC Salt. That's going to be a real nice one right there. We'll just... Uh, That's a huge exclusive. Is this his first interview since being home? Yeah, he's he been doing some little pop-up joints. You know what I'm saying? Okay. This is gonna be the first, like, real live, like, you know. Let, 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 let's let's get it done. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's nice. I like that. Yeah, and um, and I, I'm starting a foundation called Off the Court, which consists of, which we're seeing right now, man. Um, our our young black youth, man, it, it's we we lost out here. You know, mm-hmm. and, uh, totally lost. And um, we we spent so much time talking about sports and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, not paying too much attention to as a whole, not saying everybody, just as a whole, not paying attention to these kids, man, uh, just struggling, uh, not knowing, you know, right from wrong, coming from messed up parenting, uh, just lost out here, you know, uh, not respecting their elders, uh, not knowing how to uh, go apply for a job. I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on. So mm-hmm. I just created uh I'm I'm jumping some off the ground right now called off the court. You know, just just trying to get off just trying to get off the uh sports subject because you know um you have you have kids out here, man. You can you know, they always say, man, don't nobody wanna listen or they ain't gonna listen. My goal is to get about two or three out of twenty of them to listen and uh at least attempt to make a change and try to help these kids out. So, mm-hmm. you know, and what I'm doing uh, with, 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 with the strong help of uh, Victor Oladipo, Quinn Cook, uh, Keith Stevens, Walt Williams, Dickie Simpson, um, uh, Coach Bush McAdams, I mean, my man Phil Galls, Pop Messi Bonzu, just to name a few, man, mm-hmm. uh, who, who, who have been support- who have been supporting the start of of what I'm doing and uh and and uh I'm just trying to actually build up a foundation where to get a nice home for these kids to come to provide you know provide lunch dinner breakfast uh I mean like skills uh, uh computer skills life skills uh e- even even coming to you know just parenting and it you know these, these teenagers these babies having babies just being able to try to make that change and um have a couple of these kids man just hear what we got to say just working on some motivational i've been doing some research and been, been been really really taking my time uh locating a lot of help you know a lot of um you know, a lot of help. And like I said, the guys I named, they have donated, you know, they have donated uh, to the situation, you know, so I can get a spot, a nice office, a nice place the kids can come to, like a computer setting, mm-hmm. and uh, spend some time with. Uh, you know, just, 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 teach, just teach these these young men how to, how to grow up, man. And um, I, I've, I've been around too long to not take that stand. And um, like I'm just tired of seeing these kids, man. Like 11 year old kid got killed the other day. I mean, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And, and long as long as we sit here and just talk about it and, and, and talk about how sad it is, I'm just willing to take a gamble on it and um and, and just give 
my time uh, to people, to these kids, man, and um, just trying to make a change. So uh, just been doing some research, man, and um, been talking to some big heavy hitters and helping me out uh, to get me going. So right now is just a start, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at towards the end of the summer, uh, you know, that we, we will have actually somewhere for these kids to meet up at least once or twice a week, have activities for them, you know, uh, job training and things of that nature to, uh, to try to make a change. So uh, I'm on the right path right now. I've been getting some great feedback and I'm also, you know, I'm also, I'm also looking for more help. Um, like I said, whoever, whoever listening, they can contact me at 202-855-4514. And that's my phone number. You can email me at Kurt Smith, four, five, eight, at Yahoo, uh, Cash App, Watch 1968, or you can just send through Zelle if you want to help, or if you just want to call and you have help, uh, uh, volunteer your help, I'm over and talk to the kids, I'm available for that also, so that's all I'm doing, man, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to make some type of change or some type of help, at least, at least I can say I'm, I'm trying to get, so, to, get to, to get it together. So I had a question, Is your will your program be for district youth? Uh, PG County youth or a combination of both? It's a, it's, a, it's a combination of both because that's how I grew up. It's no okay. Way. I'm not, I'm not, I, it's no way because all these kids need help. And, and, and not only that, that's a great uh, question because if you really think about it, a lot, a lot of these kids that's moving to the county are actually from the city. Right. And, and, they, and, and, and crime, crime is being, it, 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 it's been exchanged. It's been exchanged from the youth. They going out Maryland. They coming to DC. It's, it's been exchanged, and, and it's getting it's, it's 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 crazy, and it's very unacceptable for 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 no one to just set, stand up and just say, "Man, we, we got to stop. We got to stop actually caring about ourselves and care about what's going on in our communities, man." And I'm just trying to get something started that I think would be a good thing. And uh, my 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 partner has always has already donated uh, three hundred uh, laptop computers. To um to to the foundation nice. to actually you know uh, uh, supply kids with so I'm I'm working hard man a lot of people don't even understand what's going on but I'm I'm in the lab man trying to make it done. 